So um, welcome to this video, and I hope that you can see the mission statement, which I felt God speaking to me about this week. As you can see, there's no racism on it. There's no false doctrine on it, because you're relying on God, Yah, to write the commandments on your heart and mind. And that's the priority. That really is what God is looking for, for us to live by faith according to His Word. And just contemplating these things as walking through Accra. Here's the bats of Accra. Fruit bats. And they've been going out right over here for a good few minutes. There's loads of them. And they will sleep under the bridges. Thousands and thousands of them. Some of them are very big, actually. <laughs> About the size of, I would say, a cat or something. Some of them. There's the man. Had a Sabbath yesterday. No, they just keep coming. It's their bedtime, or maybe they just wake up and then go out hunting, I'm not sure, so hopefully I'm not on the menu. Um, excuse me, I'll move until I get knocked down. Okay, so this video is for those that say that uh, bottles was always in the King James Bible. Um, as you can see, this is a King James version. Um, it's a Dixon's Teacher Bible, but it is a King James Bible. Okay. So I actually published in South Africa. So let's have a look. So Luke chapter 5. We also spoke a parable to them. Okay. Verse 37. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Bottles is not there. Else the new wine will burst the skins. It doesn't burst the bottles, it bursts the skins, because that's been a long thousands year old practice. And be spilled and the skins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into new wine skins. So the word of God is preserved in this uh, Dixon's teaching Bible, printed in South Africa, and it has a King James International Version. In other words, it's the same version that's from the, the Oxford edition, possibly the Cambridge edition, except that you got, uh, let's see, let's see what else we got in here that's uh, the same. Well, here's another one that most of us clearly remember, uh, Luke 17, 31. In that day, he who is on the house top and his goods in the house, not stuff, it says stuff now in the Oxford and Cambridge editions. His goods in the house, let him not come down to take them out. He who is in the field, let him likewise not turn back. So remember goods or possessions, not stuff. Oh, it's very interesting to see um, that thy King James Bible is mostly how we would remember it. Um, we've been a Christian longer than five or ten years. Um, and not just coming into it 
without any knowledge of um, going to church, uh, a pastor opening and reading from the Word of God. Uh, these concepts, especially the wineskins and the New Testament and some other things, even First John 5, 7 was there in, in that version, showing that it's a King James Bible. We may consider to get it. Um, some other pictures I'll show um, just after this. Uh, we'll show you that the school I've been involved with, that I'm very impressed with the headmaster. He is a very good herbalist. I mean, there's people who buy and sell herbal medicine, but this guy really has been blessed by God, invited me to preach in his church. Um, if any of you want to get involved in helping him finish off the roof in his school, you know, it's been going for about seven years. Um, since the last time actually I was in Ghana um, they're old school traditional Christians um, that they uh, do things in order and the fact that they will sing old traditional hymns they will wear uh, white vestures when going into the church um, his name is Pastor Christopher um, you can see just in, probably in the, about the centre of, of, of the pictures that I'll post after this. Um, so if you're interested in donating to his cause, you know, he wants to build a small herbal center as well. So he's a good man of God. I believe he knows what he's doing. He's, he's educated. Um, so it's a good um, project to get involved with. And the fact that, you know, and he's helped me to get cured from some little skin ailment I've had since the last time I was in Ghana. Um, and that, that to me, you know, it's been Christians, I've been praying for this for years and years and years. Nothing happened, but God sent me to this man. And within about a week, I um, applied an ointment and prayed. He told me to basically pray over it and apply the ointment and, and it's, it's gone, it's healed. Um, so we thank God for that testimony. Um, I'm sure if any of you want to come out and do volunteer work in any schools, you can do that through um, volunteering for orphanages and to work in orphanages and schools, and you pay a fee for that. But because I was here in Ghana already, um, I didn't have to pay accommodation fees and any joining fees. So thank God for that again. I was able to help out a little bit. As you can see from the pictures, um, some of them really bad skin ailments, but within about a few days or a week, um, it's practically going. You know, you can see that it's healing in the process. You know, and an actual healing process does take a few weeks, um, especially with skin issues and all that, and the diseases that are going around West Africa just now. Um, so it's a good project to get involved with. Also, I'd just like to talk about the fact that um, I've been bitten by mosquitoes. <laughs> okay, sorry for the distraction. I just wanted to talk to you really. Um, if you know someone, uh, every, all Christians talk about knowing Christ. Now, if, if you know someone, you know their name, right? You get to know their name, what's your name? Now, especially if you're dating someone, you may ask them, so when were you born? When was your birthday? You know, here in West Africa, you have a name for each day that you were born. So it could be Kufi, it could be um, Kwasi, all these different names that for male and females according to the day they were born on. So that's another important thing if you want to know someone better. you got to kind of know these things. And maybe their favourite colour as well. That type of thing. These are kind of standard questions that people get to know one another, get to know their name. So why is it then that the Christian church have a problem with the name of Yeshua? Why? Why does the Christian church have a problem with the name of Yeshua when he comes back to this earth? Um, his, his real name, Aramaic and Hebrew name, is Yeshua. Um, the, the one we have passed down to us is Jesus. It's fine. But you've got to understand that, that the name he was given when he was here in Israel here on earth, was Yeshua, and is Yeshua still. Also, what you got to realise is that um, Yeshua wasn't born at Christmas. 
get in and die Easter. Um, if you really want to get to know someone, you ask Yeshua or ask your Lord Jesus when he was born. And those of us who've done that, he will point us to the scriptures. He will, he will point us to the holy days in Leviticus 23 and show us that he died on one of these holy days, i.e. Passover, and he was born on one of these holy days, i.e. Feast of Tabernacles, um, which is otherwise known as Sukkot. It's a, it's a week festival. And then on the last great day, the eighth day, um, is the sort of last uh, official feast day. Um, really, really difficult to get these mosquitoes. But anyhow, um, I hope you've enjoyed this little video. And also, the favourite colour. What is Jesus' favourite colour? It's not red, is it? It's not red. He went to a church. The seats are red. The carpets are red. Everything's red. Jesus' favourite colour isn't red, by the way. Just thought, just thought I'd let you know that as well. So, so if that sort of aligns with the Jesus you know, then he's, he's kind of gone to know me a bit more. He's allowed me to get to know him a bit more. The same as, hopefully, me and you, the subscribers out there, can get to know one another a little bit better. And we can't force um, any doctrine upon each other. Um, once or twice is enough. If I reject it, it means that I've, I've explained it. I don't need to go over it again. You know, I wish you all the best, but don't be autistic and keep pushing false doctrine, because because it's just not not worth the while. You know, um, there's a lot of people caught up in false doctrine and just been talking, as I said, to um, a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons here that need to hear the truth, the true gospel again. These people have been through all kind of stuff. Um, since the slave trade and whatnot, so uh, yeah, I mean, people have got to be told the truth, settled in the truth, not hard pushed, not not the hard sell, but just generally, people have got to hear the truth. And there's a lot of great souls here in West Africa that really want to learn. Um, so just thanks for your prayers and your support. If you want to support Pastor Christopher, let me know. And and I uh, believe through Western Union you'd be able to send him money for, for his cause um, to help with his herbal centre, which does help to heal people's skin ailments and other things, plus um, to finish off the roof for his school. May the Lord bless you.